Saturday Night Theatre. We present Leave It to the Hangman, a play for broadcasting by Bill Knox from his own novel of the same name. Leave It to the Hangman. John Kilburn and Patrick Kilburn. The sentence of this court is that you will be taken from this place to the prison of Barlini at Glasgow to be detained until the 15th day of May. And on that day, within the said prison, and between the hours of 8 and 10 a.m., suffer death by hanging. This pronounced for doom. Come in. Here's the Kilburn file, sir. Oh, thanks, son. Have you seen Inspector Moss about? He's um, in the duty room, Chief Inspector. Well, chase him in, will you? Yes, certainly, sir. Morning, Colin. You want me? Aye, Phil. Shut the door, will you? Yeah. Got trouble? What else? Do you remember the Kilburns? The Kilburns? Aye. Uh, five years ago, wasn't it? Uh huh. Father and son shot a uniformed man while resisting arrest. It was. Uh, Oh, it was a strange one. Fingerprints of both on the gun, but we didn't know who fired it. Yes, it looked like a double hanging. Aye. Kilburn Sr. confessed at the last minute. He took the eight o'clock walk, and the son got off with life. That's it. Patrick Kilburn's in the open prison near Perth. Oh. This is a copy of a note he found in his bunk. Oh. How it got there is our puzzle. You have stolen five years. Now you will be killed and the reckoning will be paid. Melodramatic stuff. Stolen five years. Reckoning will be paid. Could be a crank. Aye, maybe. What's Kilburn's reaction? <laughs> Very unhappy. Phil, there's a train north at 12.15. That's half an hour from now. We'll eat aboard. Oh, railway meals play hell with my officer. <laughs> Don't you ever want to live dangerously? I just want to live. Well, not a bad lunch. Could have been worse. Coffee, sir? Oh, a black, please. Certainly, sir. Oh, and a uh, white for Mr. Moss. Yes, sir. Yeah. This is a damned interesting file. Uh, nice people, the Kilburns. Yeah, started with a smuggling racket out of error. There's big money in that. Seems these two kept branching out. Strictly cash and carry stuff. Delivery anywhere in Europe. Well-paid messengers at the service of crime. That's what the papers said about them. Ah, a wonderful trial for the papers. I was reading up on the shooting. One cop got a bullet in the lung. Then there was a free-for-all, and a second shot was fired. They had each fired one shot. Paraffin wax test showed that powder grains in each man's right hand. You know, I should be at the zoo. Eh? You know, lions, tigers, elephants. Oh, Taking the kids? Uh-huh. Third arrangement in a row I've had to scrub round. Uh, shouldn't be long now. Another coffee? Oh, thanks. Dead on time. And there's a reception committee. Mr. Thane? Yes. I'm Chief Officer Dunsire. Car's over here, sir. Glad to see you, Chief Inspector. 
someone's just taken a pot shot at Kilburn. He used a rifle. What? Oh, Kilburn's all right. The devil looks after his own. How did it happen? Well, he was in the prison garden. The shot grazed him along the ribs. And where's he now? In Sigby, roaring like a bull. And the rifleman? Well away, I'm afraid, sir. Well away. Looks more like a hotel than a jail. No prison bars around here, sir. Just that fence to keep outsiders from getting in. Uh Uh-huh. I'll take you straight to the governor. Thanks. Along this way, sir. In here, sir. Come in. Ah, Chief Inspector Thane. I'm Maxwell. Sir, and this is Inspector Moss. Afternoon, sir. Afternoon, Moss. I've heard about the shooting. Any progress? Not yet, I'm afraid. You have a real basin of trouble on your hands. Well, we're lucky we haven't a dead body. What's Kilburn said about it so far? Damned little. He was pretty scared when it came to me about that note, though. I'll, uh, I'll get him in. I'll bring him in, Dunsire. Smartly now. Now, all right. His wound's taped up, sir. The doctor says it's just a scratch. Just a scratch? So I'm a lucky boy. Relax, Kilburn. They won't get you here. Yeah. Cops as well as screws. But you think he'll try again, don't you? The... He will. I've got rights. I want back to a nice safe cell in a proper prison. You said they. Who are they, Kilburn? Who's after you? And nothing to say. But will you screws get me out of here to somewhere safe? That's enough, Kilburn. Ah, what's the use? Screws. Can I go now? Take him away, Dunsire. Yes, sir. Come on. Ah, well, I'm going, I'm going. Well, that's it, Thane. He won't talk. He must have a pretty powerful reason for keeping quiet. Ah, well, Moss and I'd better contact the local police. All right. A Detective Inspector Roy is your man. You'll find him in that small wood behind the grounds. <sighs> Nearly there, Phil. Mm-hmm. Now, over this dike. <sighs> Hello there. Ah, Detective Inspector Roy. Right. Thane, Glasgow CID. Yeah. This is Inspector Moss. Moss, right, Inspector. Any luck so far? Aye, oh, some. We've found what you might be calling the sniper's nest. Ah. And uh, this. A point three double O cartridge recently fired. Where was it? Over there. See the flattened grass this side of the dike? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, look over there. Just this side of Warrender House. Yeah. That um, that market garden bit's where Kilburn was working. Right in his sights, eh? Aye, there's more, Moss. Take another wee look at that grass. Mm. Notice anything? Two of them. Aye, that's how it looks. There's two distinct patches flattened down. Two people waited here, waited for quite a wee while. Come over here a moment, Moody. What's up, sir? There's one of the footprints you've been looking for, by that patch of bare earth. What do you make of it, Phil? That's all we needed. That was a woman's shoe. Ah, nearly finished. That's it. List of all witnesses who were at the trial. How about you, Colin? Just finished the report on our visit. There was no sense in staying up there any longer, Phil. No. What we are after is back here in Glasgow, I'm sure of that. Uh, tea, sir? Yeah. Oh, good man, thanks. Um, anything else, sir? No, that's all, thanks. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. You know, Colin, all the time Kilburn's been in jail, he's been without visitors. Yet he's got folks. Mother, brother, two sisters. Irish, County Armagh. Maybe they're finished with him. Uh-huh. Kilburn and his father seem to have been in their own. The rest of the family was straight enough. That's worth checking on. I'm going down to communications. Evening, Sergeant. Can you send off a teleprinter signal for me? Right away, sir. Uh, Ready? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Thane, Millside Division, Glasgow. To headquarters, Belfast. Request rundown on family of John Kilburn, 
hanged for murder. Mm-hmm. Uh, reported staying on farm near Ochnacloy, Armagh. That's A U G H N A C L O Y. Got it? Right. Grateful for any CRO data on remaining family. Message I won't need the reply till morning, Sergeant, sir. Eleven o'clock. Oh, yeah, well, I'll be home by midnight and asleep five minutes later. In here. Millside Division Communications Room, sir. What's up? Message from Perth Police, sir. Patrick Kilburn escaped from open prison at 0154 hours this morning. Oh. And uh, Governor Maxwell's on a priority line from the prison, sir. All right. Get trunks to put him through here. Right, sir. What was it, Colin? Uh, one of my customers has jumped jail. Uh. Uh, look, you go back to sleep, dear. Uh, where's the cigarettes? Oh, I'll have one, too. Eh? Eleven years, and I still jump when that phone rings. <laughs> ah, well, you would marry a cop, Mary. Here you are. Down. Oh, here we go. A thing? Yes, I've had. What happened? Oh, he fooled us neatly. We put him in a cell for the night for his own protection. They normally sleep in dormitories. I had an officer checking him every half hour. Well, what went wrong? Oh, Kilburn pulled an old trick. He pretended to be ill. My man opened the cell and went in. Whereupon Kilburn jumped him. Exactly. What about the patrols outside? Oh, with the flap that was on, they were too busy making sure nobody got in. Oh. We're a minimum security establishment, Fane. Our prisoners aren't expected to try to escape. This one did. Oh, well, right now I'm going to do just one thing. Oh, what's that? Get some sleep. Good night, Governor. <coughs> morning, Colin. Oh, good morning. Hey, you're in early. I wanted to get rid of some of this paperwork. With Kilburn loose, we could have a busy day ahead. Much in the dispatches? They're querying expenses again. Who's... Yours? Hmm? <laughs> Any word from up north? Nothing fresh. The prison's people have come through with some gin. Oh? Uh, goes back to when Kilburn and his father were waiting trial. Father first. John Kilburn had visits from his wife and a daughter. His other son, Liam, made two visits. But from sentence till they hanged him, he refused to see a soul. And Patrick? The same. Wouldn't see anyone after sentence. The family wrote him for a spell, then gave up. How about outsiders? The father saw two. A John Barlby and a Pietro Angelo. Barlby? That name's familiar. Records say fraud and currency fiddles. We have nothing on file for Angelo. Yes? Jock Mills of the Bugle to see you, sir. Right, Sergeant. Send him through. First of the vouchers. Oh, he's not too bad. Uh, Cigarette? Uh, Thanks, Colin. Mm. Here you are. Come uh, in, Jock. How's the evening bugle? Oh, dodging the rain, it's lashing outside, sir. <laughs> Morning, Inspector Moss. How's the tummy, eh? <laughs> Laddie, when you, were, when you were a bit older, you'll treat ulcers with respect. What are you after, Jock? Oh, do you think Kilburn's heading for Glasgow? Maybe. Phil, how about checking with communications? Oh, I'll chase up some tea with plenty of sugar. They've been skimping it lately. And they're thinking of your weight. <laughs> See you, Jock. All yeah, right. The situation with Kilburn's simple, Jock. We're on the lookout, nothing more. But maybe you can help me. Do I get a story? Later, perhaps. When the Kilburn trial was on, did you ever try to see them in jail? Uh, The father, yes. We'd have paid big money for his story. I lined up a pal of his, a man called Barlby, but it was no go. Barlby? Uh, Were they close friends? No, not close. Barlby reckoned John Kilburn trusted only one man, an Italian. Name of Angelo? If you know already, why ask me? What do you know about him? Angelo? Well, Balby reckoned he was an honest man. 
He came over from Italy while the trial was on. What was Balby's interest? Oh, I'm not sure, Mr. Thane. I had an idea he wanted to take over part of the smuggling racket Kilburn was running. Aha, uh-huh, your bodyguard's back. You still here? Hi, just leaving, though. Cheerio, then. Bye. 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 Here's the tea, Colin. Oh, thanks. And a teleprinted message from Belfast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, this is interesting. Kilburn's uh-huh. family still live on the same farm. The mother's in poor health. Yeah. The son Liam was arrested just after his father was hanged for assaulting a man called Barby. No court proceedings. Looks as if Barby went over to try to get some of the father's contacts. And got more than he bargained for. Yeah. Very interesting, Phil. All right. Put me out of my misery. You want me to go to Ireland? Oh, if you get the next plane, you could be back again by this evening. Huh. Thanks. What's your program? Alien section at headquarters. Hello, Chief Inspector. Hello, Molly. What brings you to the aliens department? Well, have you got anything on a Pietro Angelo? No criminal record, but you might have him on the ordinary register. It would be about five years back. Mm-hmm. Give me a minute. Aye. Uh, let's see. Aaron, Adler, Amundsen, Andre. Ah, Angelo, here he is. Good. Uh-huh. Pretty formal, sir. Born in Rome, 1910. Profession, dental surgeon. There's the card. Oh, thanks. Home address, Via Eosta. Going to the game tonight, sir. Game? What game? Scotland and Belgium at Hamden. Sergeant Bonner's taking me. Oh, football's not my strong point, Molly. No, if it had been Murrayfield. <laughs> <laughs> Hamden's just about the last place I'll be tonight. Another goal for us, sir. You want me to cheer, Sergeant? Where's this bus party organizer? Over here, sir. Waiting in the coach park. Ah. His name's Fergus. Lucky he heard the loudspeaker appeal. Lucky he answered it, you mean? <laughs> when do you expect Inspector Moss to arrive, sir? Pretty soon. His plane has arrived, and there was a car waiting to bring him here. Round the side of this coat, sir. This way. Floodlit football. There was some floodlighting here. This is Mr. Fergus, sir. Uh, ah. he, what the devil's going on, eh? This is Chief Inspector Fane. He'll tell you. You picked up a man midway between now growth and Glasgow, right? Why? Then you but... were stopped at a police roadblock. Why? And in a whole busload of football fans, nobody thought of saying there was a stranger aboard. But he was in the thing, uh, so... Wait a minute. He's one of our cars. Look, I... Michael. So, Kilburn's made Glasgow. Who's this? Bus party organizer. Talk, Sergeant. Yep. Thanks. Now, take a look at this photograph, Mr. Fergus. Have you ever seen this man before? Well, that's the bloke. Huh? Tell me about him. Well, a, a string of buses had stopped at this hotel, like, for a, a wee refreshment. Mine was about the last to leave again. This bloke jumped out and waved us to stop. Said his own bus had gone off without him. We had a ticket, team colours and the rest. So we hauled him aboard. Listen carefully, Mr. Fergus. Half an hour ago, we had a call from up north. Somebody attacked a football fan when a busload of them stopped for a drink. He left the poor devil half naked behind a pile of beer crates and took his clothes and money. What happened to the man you gave a lift? I don't know. He said he was going off to join his own mob. What do you want him for? He's on the run. He's serving life for murder. Coming. CID. Inspector Moss here. Uh, Jock Mills of the Bugle here, Inspector. Is Mr. Thane with you? No, we've just arrived back. The bus is down in the radio room. What do you want? There's a bus kill buttons made Glasgow. It looks like it, Jock. Don't quote me on this. He bluffed his way through the roadblocks as part of a football bus party. Ah, for the big game. Uh Uh-huh. Now you can do me a favor. Name it. See if the Bugle files have photographs of either Liam Kilburn... Or his sister, Margot. There's no conviction, so our own records can't help. Oh, we, we should have them from the trial. Eh? What's the angle? Uh, later, Jock, later. Bye now. Uh-huh. 
Well, here's hoping. Well, no news yet, Phil. I've asked Jock Mills to try and get these pictures. Oh, good. Now, let's have it again, Phil. Your Ulster trip seems to have paid off. Aye, though I don't like the coin, Colin. Oh. Well, I got out to the farm, a quiet wee place in the middle of nowhere. We met the younger girl first. Uh Uh-huh. Her name's Kathleen. Then the mother. Somebody always suffers. And Mrs. Kilburn has. The woman's out of her mind in a gentle, shuffling way. As far as she's concerned, her husband's still alive. She writes him once a week and gives the family the letters to post. She writes to her son, too. Eh? Thinks he's abroad. Well, they don't post the letters to him, either. Significant enough, eh? Anyway, Liam and Margot Kilburn are supposed to be on holiday in London. That girl Kathleen's bitter, Colin. Not just at us, but at life. And especially at her brother, Patrick. Patrick, who didn't die. Patrick, who didn't die. You know, I've discovered one thing, Colin. Huh? You know what's thicker than blood? Hate. My guess is Kilburn has something worse than the devils out of hell hunting him. His own family. There's something else, Phil. Governor Maxwell phoned this afternoon. You remember the note in Kilburn's bunk? You know, the one that started us off. Aye. One of Maxwell's prisoners, a trustee on an outside job, put it there. A young woman with an Irish accent paid ten pounds for the delivery. Margot Kilburn. Maybe. There's a lot to do yet. This for a start. Yes, sir? How about that call to Rome, Jean? I've got the number, sir. Continental Trunk should be calling back at any moment. Oh, thanks. Why Rome? Pietro Angelo, the Italian, John Kilburn's friend. You think he can help? I'm hoping. Switchboard, sir. Your Rome call's coming through. I'll hold, Jean. Your Rome number is on the line, sir. Hello? Pronto chi parla? Si, Pietrangelo parla. Sorry to call you so late in the evening. Oh, scusi, who, who is this? My name's Thane of Glasgow Police. Thane, T-H-A-N-E. Ah, si comprende, signor. Oh, no, 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 it's not so late. Go on, please. Uh, you knew John Kilburn. He's true. His son, Patrick, has escaped from prison. Does this concern me? Well, Mr. Angelo, I don't know. But he broke out because he was terrified. Terrified because someone is trying to kill him. Uh, Who is making this fear? Well, we can't find his brother and sister. We're trying to prevent a tragedy. Uh, Do you understand? Si comprendo. Siente, senor. There is only one way. I will come to you. Uh, when? Uh, time counts. By aeroplano. Early tomorrow. But, Senor Thane, it is not the police I come to help, but my friend's family. Ah, it may be both. Oh, I hope so. I pray so. Well, goodbye, Mr. Angelo. Grazie. Ciao, Bella. He's coming here. Right away. Phil, what's the most obvious reason for the Kilburns gunning for Patrick? I wonder when you'd ask that. It's a mess. A real mess. Well, come on. Where to? Mr. John Barby. Angelo and Barby. John Kilburn's two visitors in prison. Angelo's coming to us. We're going to Barby. Oh, here we are, Phil. Eighth floor... Some layer. A flat in a block like this costs plenty. Uh, number five. Number four. Oh, J. Barbie. Yeah. This is for me when my pools come up. <laughs> Except I've no head for heights. Oh. And good evening. John Barbie? Yeah. Police. Yes, I felt it might be. Come in. I'm Chief Inspector Thane. This is Inspector Moss. A high-ranking delegation. Uh, Come into the lounge. I'll turn off the radio. Well, now. You know Patrick Kilburn has broken out? It's been in the papers. He got to Glasgow tonight, Balby. Oh. 
Uh, care for a drink, Chief Inspector? No, thank you. Mr. Moss? Uh, not on duty. Well, I don't usually drink alone, but, uh... Your health, gentlemen. Look, it's no secret that I knew the Kilburn. You saw John Kilburn before he died. Correct. I tried to arrange a... a, a business deal. But it fell through. Nice place you have here. Expensive. What a nasty mind, Chief Inspector. It's all strictly legitimate, I assure you. I can't help you, and I've no wish to see Patrick Kilburn. Is there a police watch on my flat? Maybe. Not maybe, please. I want it. In fact, as a taxpayer, I demand it. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, it's getting rather late. Well, we haven't yet... This way, Chief Inspector. But this way, please. Good night, gentlemen. Uh, I'll be darned. Back outside, none the wiser. He was worried, though. Slightly frightened, I'd say. Now, inside, Phil. You want him watched? Definitely. Seems to me Kilburn's more likely to visit here than Balby would wish. Who's there? Police, Mr. Barbary. Hold on. Kill them. Back inside, Barbary. Surprised? Patrick, you're crazy. There are cops outside. Back and front. I came over the roof. How about a drink? Sure, sure, Patrick. In here. Uh, that time I had a rest. Yeah. Uh, you look after yourself, Barbie. Here you are, Patrick. Good. Uh, you still keep good whiskey. If you need help, help I'll... be damned. I want my box. You're my private personal bank, remember? The, the box isn't here. Isn't here? Take it easy, Patrick. Take it easy. It's in my safe deposit at the bank. You are to keep it here. Always. You will have it first thing in the morning. I'd better. With the seal intact. If you've been snooping, Barbie, I'll have your guts. What are you going to do? Keep your nose out of my life. How about some food? And I need a clean-up. Bathroom through there. I'll, I'll get a meal. Yeah. Yeah. Got everything you need? Is there a razor handy? On the shelf, beside the basin. Blaze there at all. Bacon and eggs suit you? Yeah, sounds fine. Now, a new blade. Down, where's the shaving cream? Barbie, where's the shaving cream? Yeah, where is he? Barbie? I wonder. Barbie! Get away from the phone and leave that gun! You bastard! Get... Oh. You didn't quite make it, Barbie. You tried to shock me, eh? And this gun! Quit. Oh, don't! It was in my box. Where's the rest of the stuff? It's in the bottom drawer. Here we are. Passport. Notebook. The money's gone. I'll, I'll make it up, Patrick. Please. Bail up. Do you see this notebook? What's in it didn't make sense to you, did it, Barbie? But it holds all the answers. Contacts, routes, the key to the old man's entire setup. You didn't know, did you? Patrick! That's too late, Barbie! No, Patrick! No! Along here, sir. No, I know the way, Sergeant Parker. Yeah. Oh, where is he? The bedroom. Nothing moved or touched. Just as it was from the cleaning woman found him at nine this morning, sir. Boy, he's in a mess, Colin. Yeah. Head smashed in. Kilburn? Who else? Now, where's this woman who found the body? In the kitchen, Chief Inspector. Phil, go on over. What with her, will you? Okay. Is Mr. Thane free, Inspector? I think so, Constable. Yes. Come in, Constable. It's about how he got in, sir. 
Past two men on watch. Yes, sir. Go on. There's a fire escape from the roof of this block, sir. It leads across to an office block next door. He got in through a ground floor window, got up to the roof, and then just crossed over. That explains why he wasn't spotted. He broke the window, sir. There's some blood. He must have cut himself. Right. Get back to the window and wait there till the scientific boards arrive. Yes, sir. Ah, I wonder what Kilburn was after. Let's take a look around before the wind section blow in on us. The bugle, for instance. <laughs> You go coffee? Mills here. Okay, Jock. Ah, it's you, Sheila. Who else? Uh, Shoot. Balbi murder case. Officers of the Scientific Bureau. Scientific Bureau. Are now engaged in tests at the murder flat. Murder flat. Soon after they arrived, Chief Inspector Thane. Left by car to continue inquiries. To continue inquiries. All now. Got it. Bye, Jock. Right, bye, Sheila. Excuse me, are you a reporter? Mills of the Bugle, why? I saw you coming out of the flats. I hear tell it's been a murder. That's right. Who's been killed? A man called Barlby. Barlby? Are you sure? Aye. Was he a friend of yours? How did it happen? Well, somebody broke in. I see, don't I know you from somewhere? I don't think Aren't so. Aren't you? Here is your name, Kilburn. Margot Kilburn. Hey, come back here. Come back. He lasted. Better phone Thane about this. Mr. Angelo. Si. Sonny, your paper, Angelo. Uh, you are? Apple, please, sir. Oh, grazie. The Chief Inspector Thane's waiting for you in the security office. Will you come with me? Thank you. Prego. But of course. Mr. Angelo, sir. Oh, good morning. Buongiorno. Come in. Senor Thane? Thanks, officer. Right, sir. Oh, sit down, Mr. Angelo. Uh, grazie. So what, what is the news? It's bad. Patrick Kilburn's still on the loose. He's killed a man. Oh, terribly mal. And Kilburn's brother and sister have just been spotted in town. Uh, it is to me you must blame all of this, senor. No, oh, but that... oh, please, please. I will tell you. Understand, I was the friend of John Kilburn. Uh, during the war, oh, que disastro, mamma mia. Uh, during the war, John Kilburn was a prisoner of war in Italia. Uh-huh. When my country collapsed, he escaped. In the confusion... Well, well, he saved my life. After the peace, we ride. Sometimes we meet. Did you know he was a smuggler? Contrabando? Yeah. <laughs> of course, senor. But, but he was not all bad. Patrick, his son, was different. He was uh, a kekose. He was uh, old vicious. But John, he loved this boy. Oh, excuse me, was excuse it? Me. Yes, Thane here. Phil Moss, Colin. Angelo, arrive okay? Uh huh. How about you? I located Snouty Reese. Good. He's going to work on it. If anyone can pick up a buzz about Kilburn, Snouty will. Let's hope so. Uh, one funny thing Snouty says the word's already out. There's money going for the first Ned who contacts Kilburn. Brother and sister, maybe? Too early to say, Colin. Right, Phil. We'll meet as arranged. I'm sorry, Mr. Angelo. Ah, niente, senor. Grazie. Now, why do you blame yourself for what's happening? Senor. When John is tried for murder, I visit him here in prison. Then I go back to Italia. I know I cannot help. Then, after he is hanged, a letter comes. From him? I see. He, it looks ordinary, but, but John has ways. You take the first and the last words in each line he writes, and there is your true message. Mm-hmm. It, it was important that he had to tell someone his secret. Yes, go on. You hanged the wrong man, Chief Inspector. John Kilburn died for his son. Patrick killed the policeman. 
You are surprised? No. Not now. And then you told the family. Oh, see, I go to see them six months later. I find Liam brooding and bitter. And these lovely girls broken hearted. Their mother... Uh, I think it may help to know their father was, well, not so bad. And now Liam and Margot are trying to square the account. And if Liam and Margot kill Patrick, what is justice to them is murder in other eyes. How much do you know about John Kilborn's contact? Uh, most things. Then we're in business. First we pick up Inspector Moss, then you're taking us to every place in the city that John Kilborn ever mentioned. Ma parora, senor. First, there is a certain boarding house. <laughs> Well, we're looking for Patrick. Nobody here called Patrick. No. Here, you can't come Shut in. Shut the door, Liam. What do you up to? Where's Patrick Kilburn? Oh, I've never heard of him. Woman, stop wasting our All time. All right, Liam, I'll handle it. I'm Paddy's sister, Margot, and this is his brother. Now, where is he? This is a decent hotel. Oh, don't you be <laughs> damned. My father used this place as a halfway house, and he said it was a dump. Look. Now, just you look at this picture. A family group. My father, Patrick, and the rest of us. Mm-hmm. Well, anything else? Look, here's another picture. Just me father and I. When you... If your father came here, where did he leave his stuff? In your kitchen, woman. In the space behind the phony cupboard. All right. He's upstairs. to meet. Hey, what's that? What are you going to do with that gun? Stay with him, Margot. Right. What's he going to do? As far as you're concerned, nothing. Patrick will be leaving with us. Then you forget we were here. He's gone. What? The window's open, but the bed's still warm. Well, Margot. We keep on. Hey, what's that? Police. You, take me, brother. Hide that gun. Then bring her back, Liam. Move, woman, and guard your tongue. Madre mia, Margot. Hello, Uncle Pietro. You're in strange company. The police? Oh, Marga mia cara, it is necessary. Paul, check upstairs. The Patrick you're looking for is gone. But here's Liam coming. Make sure, Phil. Right. <clears throat> Hello, Uncle Pietro. Liam. So, Ben, we have found you both, huh? Just a moment, Mr. Angelo. See? Si? Miss Kilburn, I'm Chief Inspector Thane. How long has Patrick been gone? Minutes, maybe. He must have skipped out when we arrived. The window's open in his room, Colin. It's not a long drop. Leave anything behind? This. A handkerchief with the initials J.B. John Barlby. Who was murdered this morning. Margot Mia Keep Cara. out of this, Uncle Pietro. Angelo's a pretty good friend to have, Margot. He's told us what your father did. And how do you feel, policeman? Knowing you hanged the wrong man. Senor Thin. May, please, may I speak freely to them? Phil, you and Farker go and have a word with the woman who runs this flop house. Come on, Sergeant. All right, Angelo. Grazie, signor. Margot, and you, Liam. Gente, what you plan is wrong, is foolish. Oh, now, Basta, uno momento, wait. What the police do not know? They guess. Go home. Let them find the battery. Margot, believe me, vengeance is not for you. Do you plan to arrest us, Chief Inspector? I can't. We haven't enough on you yet. Then we can go? Margot, per favore. Sorry, Uncle Pietro. But that's how it is. Goodbye, Chief Inspector. What now, Senor Thin? They'll be followed. Come on, Angelo. We'll get you into a hotel for the night. Whatever happens, at least you've tried. And you, Senor Thin? I have an appointment with a gentleman called Snouty. This is a place, Colin. Clubs across the street. Down there at the neon sign. The constable ready? Walking up now. And there's Snouty, dead on time. <laughs> yeah. He does it well. <laughs> Most times it's real. <laughs> hey, you, sweet child. Hey, you. 
Who uh, me? Yes, you. Knock it off. Don't you like good singing over stuff? Oh, God, what you... Come on, I'm dicking you. Hey. I'm dicking you. What about? The usual. Come on, Snooty. Uh, oh, yeah. Come on, we've got yes, a car. What about it? I swear there's no what about it. And you get uh. Snooty. Thanks, Constable. Right, driver. Hello, Mr. Thien. First tracks. Oh, not bad, Snooty. A nice performance. Should have been on the stage, Inspector. My mommy I said so. Have you got anything for us? Plenty. Kelburn's been found, Gov. Who's got him? Well, uh... It was an expensive job, Mr. Thane. Oh. Can he hide a bar up on eight and a half pints? Eh? All right. That'll square it. Ta. You're a decent man for a cop. Kelburn's been passed on to a Greek by the name of Calvos. Leo Calvos. Who's he? Don't know, Mr. Moss. Runs a restaurant or something. He's a new number to me. Driver, pull in at the next corner. Then you can go home, Snouty. Oh, and ain't still young enough. Home. That's an order. I don't want you roaming around. You're the boss, Gov. Night. Good night. And now, headquarters, to see what they've got on friend Calvus and to organize a search warrant. Then we pay him a surprise visit. Do you want her? Police. Leo Calvers in? No. Open the drawbridge, girl. We want to talk. All right. Uh, uh, come in. Thanks. You, Mrs. Calvers? A friend. Leo's out. How long since he left? An hour, maybe. Anyone else here? No. Why? Right, Phil. We were looking for an escaped prisoner, Patrick Kilburn. This is a nonsense. What's your name, miss? Does it matter? I'll give you one more chance. Who are you and where's Calvus? I'm Maria Colante. I'm uh, visiting. Occupation? Dancer. Uh-huh. What's the name on your insurance card? Oh, Spinks, if you must know. Ethel Spinks, damn you. All right. Calvus got his car? Yes. Kilburn with him? Who's Kilburn? You had your chance, Maria. Phil, keep an eye on her. Uh-huh. Get the other lads in and have a policewoman sent here. Then we give this place a going over. Uh, what'll I do with this lot, Colin? I'll dump it on the bed beside the rest. Right. Hey, here's a snappy line in shut. I'll oh, put it down, Phil. What's in that folder? Let me see. Huh. Holiday snaps. Here's one of the girlfriend. Oh, that bikini doesn't hide much, does it? Mm. Wait a minute. Phil, take another look. Mm. The girl, a caravan. What's up? Where was it taken? Yeah, uh, well, it looks familiar. These hills, the sea, a couple of big ships lying offshore. A gear lock, maybe? Aha! Uh-huh. Colin, a caravan would be the perfect place to keep Kilburn hidden. Let's see the girl. Right. Back again, copper. Where was this picture taken, Maria? Can't remember. All right. Phil, hold up for questioning. I'll take a car down of my own. Fair enough. Have a couple of the county cops meet me at Gaelic Head. I'll be there by midnight. Chief Inspector Fane? Yes, that's right. I'm Sergeant McLeod. Ah. Uh, this is Constable Mercury, sir. Sir, uh, you know about the photograph? Aye. Uh, could we see it, sir? Yes, of course. Here it is. Torch, Mercury. Uh, let's see. Oh, she's nice. Never mind the woman, Mercury. Where's the map? Any ideas, Sergeant? Well, the bacon's of one, sir. Now, here's the map. And in the photo here, there's, there's these two hills on the left, almost in line. Yeah. Well, this one's the stroll. And that'll be Ben Vanner. Now that gives us a line on the map to... Uh, to about here. Aye. Aye, there's a wee caravan site there, too. Up off one of the side roads. Far? Uh, Twenty minutes away, no more. Lead on, then, Sergeant. We'll stop the cars a little way off and finish on foot.
Just a, a wee bit on now, sir. About 600 yards along the lock side. Mm-hmm. Now, we'll keep off the path in case they've posted lookout. You know your way around, Sergeant? Oh, aye. We can cut across the hillside. It's uh, just a wee bit marshy here and there. Watch your step in the dark, though. Yes, uh, I'd better go first. Sir, there's a car lying ahead just off the track. Where? Oh, I see it. Be careful now, sir. A few more yards and we'll be above the vans. Keep down, sir. Yes. Aye. Aye, that's us. Only one caravan. People in it, too. Lights. Well, sir. Look, you two wait here. I'm going down just while I look around. Luck, sir. Aye. Well, at least there's no moon. Almost there. Now, if I get under that window... Then we stole the suits from him. There are more stories, but I'm wasting time. All right, Calder. You say you'll get me out of the country. What's the payoff? That you act as our agent. I know the Kilborn smuggling network is still intact. Ah, they never broke it. But, uh, what's your anger? I run a restaurant since I come to Britain, but also I've helped plan one or two uh, incidents. Go on. This time it is big, Kilborn. Very, very big. A fortune waiting. On me? The stuff will have to be disposed abroad. It will be too hot for any British friends. Uh, My offer is £6,000 plus uh, expenses. Uh, you got a cigarette? Here, right. Mm. All right, then. Well, now, you get me across the channel, and I can pick up the threads easy enough. Good. You start your journey tomorrow night. That suits me. Uh, you broke from prison at an excellent time. Until I heard, I would have had to rely on another arrangement. Not such a good one. But I think it would have worked. Hey, Gringo! Was, Bill! Beside uh, the caravan! Blast. There's someone outside. Quick, Calvin! There he goes. He's done. Nice work, Johnny. Oh. Bring him inside. Will do, boss. Right. Shut the door. That's same. Any more outside, Johnny? Two. On the hillside. Uh, they're out cold and locked up in their own handcuffs. <laughs> well done. <laughs> That's all, boss. Two cars, three men, we are sure. So, now let us see how they came here. Anything in his pockets? Mm. Oh. Ah, yes, this photograph. A dead giveaway, Calvos. So you've been to my home uh, and found us from this. Clever. Hey, Calvos, we'll need to blow fast. Gregor, give me your gun. Here. Good. Kilburn, help them bring the two others here. Then what? The caravan rests level here. But push it a few feet, and there is a slope. Then a cliff, and a sea. Johnny, you lead the way. Right, boss. What the... Johnny, Uh, Johnny! uh, Don't try it, anyone. There's the other barrel. A fine 20 bore dog shot. Liam! Hello, brother Patrick. Kilburn, this is your brother? Yes. Then why quarrel? We are only concerned with this one. Then, no, take it easy with that gun in your hand, mister. A sawn-off shotgun at five-foot range is no plaything. Watch him, Liam. He's tricky. You have a gun. I have a gun. That way, neither of us will be rash. I want Patrick to even an account, so to speak. They hurt to kill me, Carlos. But that we can't allow. We need Patrick, I'm afraid. I came for Patrick, and I'm going to have him. Use logic. Your brother has a gun in his pocket. I have a gun. You have only one shell left. If you kill Patrick, I shoot you. If you shoot me instead, then Patrick still has his gun. Even Grigor, the frightened one in the corner, has a knife. The answer, it is simple. You let us go. That's all. Hey, hell, man, what do I do? It, it's the only way, Liam. Carver, my sister. If she said there, she could blast us as we leave. That's no problem. We use then as a safe conduct. All right, Carver. I'll do it. What's the drill? First, open the door. Now, show to your sister. 
Greg and your brother leave with the policeman. Any trouble? And stay in dice. And on your feet, copper. Yeah, yeah, a brave man with a gun, Cuban. And you're getting it easier than Barbie. Come on. Wait a moment, Carlos. What about you? I stay with you, my friend. They bring the car back here, and then I leave. And you get saved. All set, Calvos. I'm coming. Let the chief inspector go. Out, copper. Goodbye, chief inspector. Damn the lock. Right, let's get you back to the caravan, mister. Come on. <coughs> Steady it. Sorry. Easy now, easy. Liam. He's got a bullet in his shoulder, girl. Help me. All right. Come on. Gently now. Put him in the bunk. Oh, you okay, mister? Okay. Hey, drink this. Thanks. Liam, was it Patrick? No. That one on the floor. Oh. Oh, cover it off, Liam. A blanket, oh, anything. Sorry, girl, sorry. Uh, what about my men? Well, we'll need a key for the handcuffs. In my left-hand pocket. Let me. Is it this key? Uh, yes. Set them free, Liam. Right. And tell them we need a doctor. First gunshot wound they've handled since Korea. Oh, just to hold that lamp a little higher, Miss Please. Will that do? Fine. Let's see now. Mm -hmm. Gently does it. <laughs> Lovely. Basin, please. Here you are, Doctor. Ah, here's the little beauty. Well, that's it, Chief Inspector. Clean wound, no real damage. More headlights coming. It could be Inspector Moss, sir. They radioed he was on his way. I hope. Still, while I get this dressing fixed, will you? Oh, sorry, Doc. Bring him over, Constable, will you? All right, sir. Uh, some, some tape now. Here you are. Well, that's it. Well, help him on with his jacket, will you? Yes, Doctor. Mm. And that's that. In here, Inspector. Thanks. Well, I'll be on my way. Uh, thanks again, Doc. How are you doing, Colin? Oh, oh. He'll be fine. If he takes it easy. You want a lift, Doc? I know, thanks. I've got my car. Well, Colin? Oh, I'll get by. What about these two? And that body outside? He was in here until I had him moved. Liam shot him and saved my life in the process. I see. Ah, give me a hand up, will you? There we are, Colin. The shotgun, Liam. Hmm? Oh, all right. Phil, you take it. Margo, you and your brother wait here. No disappearing tricks. I want to talk to you. A word on it, Chief Inspector. Good. Phil... Let's get outside. The county boys are busy around. And Colin, Dan Lawrence came through with a scientific bureau report on Barrowby's killing just before I left. Worthwhile? Very. Remember Kilburn broke in through the office block next door and cut himself in a window? Aye. They found a cigarette end in the flat. Saliva's the same grouping as the blood in the window glass. Good. Very good. There's better. He had a shave at Barrowby's. Has a nice fingerprint on the blade. The only thing he forgot to wipe clean in the whole flat. All we've got to do is to catch him. Uh, where'd they put the body, Phil? Around here. Uh, look, uh, are you up to this? Oh, stop fussing. Come on, we'll pick up the kill buns and head for my place. I'll phone Mary on the way. You're taking them to the house? It's three in the morning. Uh, that'll be better than talking to them across the table in some police station. You know best. Come on, cheer up, Phil. <laughs> Will you come out now, Margo? And your brother. Margo, we're going now, and you come with us for a talk. There's a dead man in this place, Margo. Remember that. All right, we'll come. And we'll listen, Chief Inspector. Oh, just one thing first. How did you get here? We followed you, Chief Inspector. Eh? That's right. We dodged the men trailing us and doubled back. Let the police do the work, I said. I'll be... Oh, get into the car, both of you.
Well, front light's on, anyway. Colin. No, no I'm all right, lass. Oh. I'm all right. Hey, come in, all of you. Thanks, missus. Hey, you three go through the fire. You come with me, dear. You feel better after tidy up. Colin. No, thanks, Phil. Kilburn? Oh, yes, please. I can use it. Your sister should be back soon. Oh, you know women. She could be long enough. <laughs> no, she's here. Oh, I feel more decent now. <laughs> Your wife says she's fixing us some food, Mr. Thane. She won't let me help. Oh, sit down, Margot. All right. Good. Well, we'll skip what we know already. But you found out your father confessed to murder to save Patrick. The open prison was your first chance to plan this crazy vengeance. No secret there. Well, we're listening anyway. So Patrick escapes, gets to Glasgow, quarrels with John Barlby and robs and kills him. Calvert's gang need Patrick, and Liam has to kill a man. What you're saying is that because of us, two men have died. Uh, partly. Look, Margot, killing Barlby was a capital charge, and we've got enough to convict on it. The law can take over now. Oh, I... I don't know. You knew your father was a smuggler. Yes, but the old man never carried a gun in his life. And Patrick let him hang. You've changed your mind, haven't you? About about wanting Patrick, Liam. Whatever you say, dear. It's getting too complicated for me. What happens to Liam about, about the man of the caravan? I would call it self-defense. Oh, you can call it what you like. We'll give the law its chance, Chief Inspector, for a little while. But I warn you, if it fails, we'll deal with Patrick. We'll deal with him ourselves, Chief Inspector. Sound the horn, Grigor. Lagan should be on the lookout. Sure, boss. That should get him. Mm. The sooner we get this van undercover, the better. There he is. Take it in. Come on out, Kilburn. Where are we? Used to be a timber mill. Ah, here comes Lagan. Hello, boss. Hey, where's Johnny? Kilburn, this is Arthur Lagan, an engineer. An important man to us. Hello, Lagan. What? Johnny's dead. We had trouble. Hell. The job... Is still on. What's the time? 9.30. But come... Later. Kilburn, come over here. In here. Wait, I put on the light. There are a few windows in this place. Now the job. You see these two long packing cases? In a few hours, they'll be filled with roughly 50,000 pounds in gold. Big. Where from? Lockhead Castle. Ever heard of the Lockhead Plate? So that's it. 17th century stuff, museum pieces. All solid gold, Kilburn. Only royalty have better. Now here's Grigor. Got everything. Here, Kilburn, this is yours. What? Naval uniform. Look over there, in the corner. What do you see? A lorry. That's a... That's a naval lorry. Bought government surplus. Well, how does this stuff help? Lord Lockhead is going to give us his collection of plates. Today, Britain's newest aircraft carrier arrived in the Gaelog. Aboard her, there is to be dinner party. All the NATO leaders and many politicians will be guests. Um, a lorry plate... Exactly. is being loaned to the Navy for the evening. A naval lorry from the shore station goes to the castle today to collect it. A lieutenant, two of an escort, along with the driver. And we take over... Let the boss finish, Kilburn. Lockhead Castle is in the hills. It is a lonely road. They will not be looking for trouble until after they collect the plate. Then what? Back here, we melt the gold down. Within two hours, we have two long metal shafts painted grey. They are urgently needed to repair a motor yacht lying near Dover. You go to Glasgow, put the boxes on the train south, and travel with them. 
But the cops had picked me up the moment I showed my nose in the railway station. Nonsense. You wear glasses and business clothes. You part your hair differently. You walk with a limp. Throw attention to yourself. Do everything a wanted man wouldn't. And uh, at Dover. At Dover, the yacht sails. You get to the continent and dispose of the gold for us. But, Kelburn, don't think you can disappear. I have many friends. <laughs> Chief Inspector Thane here. Inspector Moss on the line, sir. Oh, put him through. Yes, sir. Hello, Colin. Any luck at Calvert's restaurant, Phil? Only a big penciled ring around today's date on his desk calendar. What now? For a start, the man Liam shot was an army deserter, wanted in London for an armed holdup. And I've got a present for you. A gun. A gun? Chief Constable's idea, Phil. One each. Head back here now, will you? I promised Margot Kilburn and her brother we'd run them out to the caravan. Eh? What for? Well, they left their car out there. Anyway, I want another look round. Okay. See you, Phil. <sighs> yes, sir? I'll see the Colanti girl now. Right, sir. Miss Colanti, sir. Oh, thanks, Sergeant. Well, sit down, Maria. Sergeant Farkas said you wanted to talk. If it helps me get out of here. Ah, it may. When did Calvus take you to the caravan? About... about two weeks ago. It was a holiday, he said. But he kept going off to meet people. Any visitors? No, nobody. Did you see anything unusual? No. Well, except once, maybe. We went for a drive. Uh Uh-huh. Leo stopped at her garage and bought a big drum of oil. Not for the car, the kind you use for central heating. They put it in the boot. What happened to it? Well, he went away by himself for the afternoon, and when he came back, the oil was gone. I remember he had a paint stain on his trousers, and, well, I don't know why, but he was angry when I asked him where he'd got it. Nothing else? No, I swear it, Mr. Thane. And that's about it so far, Phil. Looks like today's the day, all right. But where heating oil fits into a hold-up, I'm damned if I know. Ah. If he's about to pull the job, shouldn't we be back in town? The whole area's alerted, Phil. And our job's still to find them. There may be a lead that's been missed at the caravan. At least the rain stopped, anyhow. Oh, there's the caravan, Mr. Thane. And our car. Margot rented it, Chief Inspector. We'd have a job explaining if it had gone. (laughs) Aye. Uh, slow down, driver. Pull up by the caravan. I uh, will do, sir. Uh, hello, sir. How's the shoulder? Oh, are you still here, Constable Murphy? I thought you'd be at home after that clout in the head. Oh, I'm all right, sir. Nobody else here at the moment, though. The scientific people finished before lunch. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll... Uh poke around the caravan, and you two can help. Anything you say, Chief Inspector. Come on, Liam. You might see if you can find a pair of old flannel trousers. They're around somewhere. Oh, they should be. All right. We'll take this end, Chief Inspector. Yes, right. Try those built-in cupboards. Why the flannels, Colin? I'm not sure myself. Mr. Thane, is this what you're looking for? Hmm? Let's see. Ah, this is what I want. Paint. Here, uh, spread it out, will you? I'm still one-handed a bit with this damn shoulder. All right, there you are. Yes, yes, dark blue, almost grey. Anything in the pockets? Wait, I'll see. No, no, they're empty. Uh, Colin, the driver's waving. Must be a message on the floor. Uh Uh-oh, this may be it. Liam, you and Margot have your own car. Head back for Glasgow and stay in that hotel until I contact you. Come on, Phil. Message on the blower, sir. Control says it's urgent. Give me the mic. One four to control. Pass your message. Over. Hello, one four. Urgent message for Chief Inspector Thane. Gang, believed Calvis and Kilburn, posing as Royal Navy escort, 
Escape with Hall of Gold Plate from Lockhead Castle. Request, proceed there immediately. Over. Hello, Control. Roger and out. Carry on, driver. This is Lockhead Castle. Quite a place, Phil. Hello, Chief Inspector Fay. Yeah, that's right. This is Inspector Moss. Oh, hello, Moss. Hello. I'm Inspector Baker, sir, County CID. Ah, how do you do? Well, what's the score? Oh, so far an away win for the opposition. Would you like to come in? Lord Lockhead's waiting. Right. Lead the way. Right. An away win for the opposition, you say? Uh, yes, sir. The balloon went up about half an hour ago. A forestry worker patrolling one of the big plantations around here came across the real naval party, complete with lorry. Uh They were tied up and the lorry engine wrecked. Seems they stopped to help what looked like another naval truck which had broken down and then they were jumped. Any casualties? Aye, one. A torpedo man with a bullet in his chest. He's in hospital. There were four in the fake party. We've a general alert out. You'll need to do a damn sight more than that, Baker. Uh, Lord Lockhead, Chief Inspector Fay. Glasgow CID, sir. Uh, Yes, how to do well, Thane, this papers be found. Understand? It's a national treasure. Tell me how it happened, sir. Damn it, Baker knows already. But I don't, Lord Lord. No, no, of course. Well, they came here, a lieutenant and escort, normal service vehicle. And you spoke to them, sir? To the fellow posing as an officer. He had the letter of authority. The plate was already waiting and crated. Blast it, he even had a sherry with me while my staff helped load the crates into this confounded vehicle. And he said nothing suspicious? Hardly said a word. Just sat sipping my sherry and yes sirring and no sirring. Anything else, sir? Blasted little. Spoke with an Irish accent, said he'd not long been posted up here. Tell me the approximate weight of plate taken, sir. Weight? Well, about 200 weights. Easy enough to melt down? Yes, I, I suppose... They couldn't destroy the collection, Zane. The, the, the craftsmanship... They... Melted down, what would it be worth? Less than half its value, man, Zane. Fifty thousand pounds, but they couldn't... They to couldn't them, it, it would be worth the loss. As plate, it would be too bulky and too hot for any fence to handle. Inspector Baker. Yes, sir. Uh, the genuine lorry, did it come from the Admiralty Port? Uh, yes, the escort party is back there now, sir. Ah. Right. Moss and I'll head there next. <laughs> Fifty thousand quid's worth of gold. Uh, no wonder Calvis was so keen to locate Kilburn. The Kilburn network's the perfect way to farm out the stuff abroad. I wonder what gave Calvis the idea in the first place. Oh, there was a story in the paper. Oh, about five or six weeks ago. He gave all the details about this NATO dinner. Admiral reports on ahead, sir. Right, driver. Uh, Calvis seems to read his papers. It all fits in, Phil. Even the paint stain on these flannels. Blue-gray paint, just the thing for touching up an ex-Navy vehicle. Hey, Recognize the car parked at the entrance gate? Hmm? Oh, blast. Slow down, driver. <whistles> Wind down that window, Phil. Hello, Chief Inspector. What are you doing here, Margo? Waiting for you. We heard what happened, and Liam and I reckoned you'd come to the port sooner or later. You can't help here. Liam and I think differently. She's right, Mr. Thane. Don't worry, we won't interfere. But until you lay Brother Patrick by the heels, we'll be around. You're wasting your time. All right, driver, go on. They won't move, Colin. I thought we'd got them off our backs. Well, let's find out what the Navy knows. That's all, leading seaman. Thank you. Right, dismiss. Sir. Well, that's the lot, Chief Inspector. You've seen the entire detail, except the man in hospital, of course. The descriptions tally, Commander Speedwell. Kilburn, Calvus, the one called Grigger, and a fourth we don't know. A gin, Chief Inspector? Oh, thanks, sir. Could use it. You, Inspector Moss. I'll settle for a soft drink, sir. Oh. Oh, what? See what I can do. Uh, orange and soda? Thanks. Uh, it's my stomach. Ah. Oh. 
I see. Nasty. Commander, is there another phone we can use? Uh, yes, uh, in the next office. Well, here we are. Oh, thanks. You're very good health. Cheers. Mm. Yes, uh, phone's next door. Help yourself. Phil, check with headquarters, will you, just in case they've anything fresh? Okay. Well, this is a hell of a business for me, Thane. Uh, another one? Uh, no, thanks, no. How many of you people knew the arrangements for collecting the plate? Oh, too many, I suppose. By the time this is over, I'll probably be running a tug in one of the banana republics. <laughs> Damn it, the Admiralty made a big thing of this dinner. Good publicity, they called it. And now they've changed their minds. Yeah, that's an understatement. How about you, Colin? Uh, anything fresh? We know who number four is. The prints from the caravan match an Arthur Lagan. Done time for safe, Lloyd. Yes? Sir... Well, Stuart? Uh, Sub-Lieutenant Michaels would like a word with you, sir. All right. Sir? Who's Michaels, Commander? Officer of the day. Can't think what the deuce he wants. Come in. Sir? Well, Michaels, what is it? Sir, we've had a complaint from a woman about a dog, sir. Dog? Yes, sir. <clears throat> but it's peculiar because we couldn't have done it. But then what? Well, speak English, damn it. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, run over her dog, sir. You trying to be funny, Michael? No, wait a moment, Commander. What about this dog, Sub Lieutenant? Well, the woman phoned in, Chief Inspector. Says one of our trucks ran over her dog and didn't stop. Michaels, what the devil? But sir, I've checked every truck that's come in. Not a man knows a thing about it, and none of them should have been anyone near the place anyway. You she was sure it was a naval truck. Oh, sure enough to talk of suing us, but none of our trucks have been in that area, and I thought, well, I couldn't be positive. Positive? Of course, it's positive. Damn good deductive reasoning, young fella. Uh, help yourself to a gin. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. We need a map, Commander. Oh, there's one here. Mm. Uh, here we are. I'll do it. Now, uh, where was this dog run over? Um, about here, sir. Uh, at this village. Mm. Two miles northeast of Helensborough. That's about uh, only seven miles away. Did she tell you where the truck was heading? Uh, northeast again, Chief Inspector. Ah, minor roads, nothing else. Phil, we're in business. Oh, what do you mean? It's not a shortcut to anywhere. They've gone to Earth, Commander, somewhere around this section of the map. Mm -hmm. Commander, we'll leave right now. Will you contact the police and say I want the local bobby and a carload of men? We'll rendezvous, let's see, uh, oh, here at the crossroads. <laughs> We should be there in under 15 minutes. Colin, the Kilburns are still waiting outside the gate. Oh, don't stop, driver. They spotted us. They've started up. Damn. Yes, they're following. Driver. Yes, sir. Lose them. Yes, sir. Take this next left turn off. Still there, but dropping back. Pour it on, driver. Yes, sir. Still dropping back. Now, around this next right-hand corner, then the road forks. Out of sight, Colin. Take the left now. That may have done it. No sign of them. Must have taken the wrong fork, sir. Good. All right. Ease off a bit. But we still haven't time to waste. Made good time. Hello, Sergeant McLeod. How many men have you? Uh, two carloads, sir. Eight, including myself. And the local man's here, too. Uh, I want him. Uh, Dugan. Yes, Sergeant. Sir? Constable, you know about this woman whose dog was hit? I certainly do, sir. She's been falling nearly every ten minutes since it happened. Mm -hmm. Now, take your time over the next one. Is there anywhere around here where there might be a furnace plant? 
You mean some kind of thing that could melt down the lockhead plate? You've got the idea. Hmm. There's the old Oakland timber mill, sir. Mm-hmm. About three miles from here. Oh, well, it's been empty for years, but I did hear somebody had taken it over. Then let's try the old Oakland timber mill. yards along, sir. There's an old path goes off to the left. The mill's at the far end. Oh, see, another couple of hundred yards. All right. Driver, stay by your cars. Sergeant, sir. I want the rest of the men to spread out. We'll head through the trees and use every spot of cover that's going. Are you heard, boys? Yes, I'll Better check that gun, Phil. Aye. Well, at least it's a nice day for it. Just on a little, sir. I've told the rest to stay put. I'll lead on. Ooh, that shoulder again. Oh, I'll manage. Uh, aye. Aye, there, sir. That's the place. Yes. Black smoke from the chimney. This is it, all right. Sergeant, uh, how close do you say we can get under cover? Oh, uh, oh, 20 feet, sir. Uh-huh. Then the trees thin. We could try a rush. No, they've got guns, Phil, and we'd still need to force that main door. Wait a minute. There's a side door, too. A pretty small one, but no windows overlooking it. Move back a bit where we can talk. You've got a plan, Chief Inspector. Aye, one that should work, thanks to those trees. Phil, go back to the cars. Mm. See if there's a, a blanket, a sack, anything like that there. And tell the drivers, as soon as they hear a whistle blast, that they bring the cars up fast and block that path. Right. Sergeant. Yes, sir. By the time Inspector Moss gets back, I want the best tree climber among your men. And a long pole. Yeah. I don't follow, sir. There's going to be no difficulty getting in, Sergeant. The door's going to be opened for us. Yeah. Well, you look at the stuff, Carlos. That's fantastic. Get a load of this punch pole. Beautiful. Almost sacrilege to melt down such precious things, eh, Kilburn? That must weigh about ten pounds. Mm. How many more cases to open now? Ah, uh, there's three. Uh, what's holding things up at the furnace? A feed pipe seized, but it's fixed now. Lagan's watching it. Where's Gregor? I'm guard at the main door like you told him. Good, good. I'll see how Lagan's progressing. She's coming on nicely, boss. Good. How long now, lad? Oh, any minute. I've got mold open, ready for a trial run. Oh, this heat. How you can stand it? Are we ready yet? Uh, she'll do. Put these gloves on. Then we thread the carrier bars through the bowl's stub arms. Huh. I'll take this one. Uh, oh, this heat. This <coughs> 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 smoke. Like it was happening. Chimney! Something's happened! The chimney! Must be blocked! Did the darn furnace down! Must get rid of this blast smoke! Open that door! Let's open the smoke out! Open the door, quick! Come on! Stop us! Stop us! Here we are! Run for it! This time! Look out, Sarge! I've got him! Let me in my handcuff. Who wants the other one? Keep back, copper. Drop that part. I've got him. Drop it. All right. Well done, Dugan. Keep going, men. It oh, worked, oh, Colin. <laughs> Up the tree and a blanket over the chimney. <laughs> it worked. Go, oh, boys. Keep cover. There's one of them at the packing cases. The other's at the door, sir. Kill them. Give it up. The nuts, copper. Two rounds, Phil. Each. He's running, sir. The lorry, Colin. He's making for the lorry. Gilbert, wait for me. Wait for Gregor. 
Did you see that? Red of Gold and Adam. Our cars will stop him. No, he's off the track. Dodge them. Sergeant, another car, quickly. We're gaining on him, sir. Want me to take him? In that truck? No, it is near us across the road. I'll get on the floor. Lay on a roadblock. Oh, wait, sir. Look. What? He's heading for the bridge, sir. And there's another car coming towards it. Are they crazy? There's no room to pass. He must be doing 70. That car, Phil. It's Margot and Liam. What are they trying to do? Phil God knows. Only two people in the world would go at him like that. They'll meet on the bridge. Head on. Unless one driver gives. And my bet it. Yes. Steady, Diddle. See your driver, lend a hand. Yes, sir. Phil, see what's happened. Right. I never want to try that again. I can't stop this trembling, my hands. You're a damn fool, Liam. You and your sister, a pair of damn fools. You're close to being a pair of dead damn fools. I knew Patrick would break for us, Mr. Thane. He always did when we were kids. We've got him, Colin. Is he? No. He'll live and be tried. Oh. Oh, I'm glad. Can I have a cigarette? Yes, here. Take one of these. His blood on our hands. I, it would have solved nothing. You're right, girl. We can go home now and leave it. Leave it to the hangman. <laughs> In Leave It to the Hangman, the principal parts were played as follows. Chief Inspector Thane, Duncan McIntyre. Detective Inspector Moss, John Young. Patrick Kilburn, Brighton Murdoch. Liam Kilburn, Arthur Boland. Margot Kilburn, Gwyneth Guthrie. Others taking part were Effie Morrison as the landlady, Sheila Donald as Maria Colante, Charles Batiste as Pietro Angelo, Joe Dunlop as the communications sergeant, Michael Elder as Fergus. Richard Finlay as Johnny, John Grieve as Jock Mills, Bill Henderson as Sub-Lieutenant Michaels, Alec Monteith as Sergeant Farker, Douglas Murchie as Calvos, Alec Poes as John Balby, and Gerard Slevin as Speedwell. All other parts were played by members of the cast. Leave it to the Hangman was adapted by Bill Knox from his novel of the same name and produced by James Crampsey. The program, which was recorded will be repeated on Monday at 3 p.m. <laughs>